It's been much cooler over the past couple of days over a good part of the central and northern plains with temperature anomalies anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees below average, which you would typically see in the month of August. So it's definitely been a rare treat. And I think overall that trend continues for much of the week while much of the deep south will be locked under that ridge of high pressure for a good part of the southern plains as well as the southeast and one of the culprits is is we take a look at the big picture on the 500 millibar we've got this more or less elongated trough we got a ridge of high pressure that's been dominating over a good part of canada that traps this cooler trough underneath and we have these disturbances that are coming off the pacific and it's going to pick up with this elongated trough and keep the cooler anomalies and the northwest flow events alive that also means more instability more heavy rain showers as well and you're actually seeing that in a good part of oklahoma this morning if we take a look at the teleconnections and one of the culprits of why this is happening in august you can see the EPO, your Eastern Pacific Oscillation, took a nosedive. You have your negative deviations all the way down to a negative three. That's actually fairly rare in the month of August. That brought that cooler shot of air across the middle part of the country. But you can see as we start this week and the coming up, it is going to somewhat modify and try to rebound. But by the weekend, we are going to see another reinforcing push of cooler air and that should keep those temperature anomalies especially across the central plains on the below average side pretty much all week long but we're also going to have some heavier rain events that will come with this and you are definitely seeing that in oklahoma this morning with your water content values over two inches per hour it is literally just dumping as these mesoscale convective complexes have been kind of training over the Oklahoma region, especially the Oklahoma City region into Norman, Oklahoma. If we, in fact, we look at some of these rainfall estimates literally since midnight, Oklahoma City has had its wettest August day on record, already tracked over six inches of rainfall across that region. But you can see the swath here diving southeast through Oklahoma, good part of Oklahoma City, as well as into Norman. Some of these isolated areas are now approaching eight inches of heavy rainfall. That is complements of just this northwest flow, this cooler aloft. And we saw some heavier rains across that region yesterday where you only topped out in the 70s. So it's been kind of very unusual. But as we head into next week, we are going to be seeing that ridge of high pressure slowly, slowly start to build as that EPO slowly starts to retreat more to neutral territory. That will allow the ridge to kind of build back in from the west and kind of take over again over a good part of the south and the southeast. So it'll slowly build into those areas where you experience those cooler anomalies into Oklahoma and eventually lift up into Kansas. But on that northern periphery, that's where we're going to be seeing some of the heavier rains and the more the ridge rider aspect kind of taking shape as we go through the week. So as we head into Tuesday with that ridge of high pressure pretty much locked over a good part of Texas and Oklahoma by then, we're going to be seeing some of that monsoonal flow continue for the desert southwest, some isolated to scattered thunderstorms in the heat of the afternoon, as well as getting into portions of Utah, especially those areas into Colorado. But as we head to the northern periphery of that ridge into Kansas, Heading into Missouri and portions of Arkansas, you're going to be on the bullseye, if you will, of some of those heavier rains, those mesoscale convective complexes as they traverse southeast off the northwest flow. And as the ridge will slowly build as we head into Wednesday, that puts the storm track just a little bit further north. So it'll get a little bit further north just each and every day as the ridge slowly starts to build back across the south so now we're talking more predominantly for those areas into missouri getting into the heavier rains now that will lift up into nebraska and then going into those areas of iowa and i think that only continues to lift even further north as we head into wednesday and thursday and friday so going into wednesday we can see another 
piece of energy, right? So you get these pieces of energy that comes off the Pacific, meets up with that elongated trough, and you got some lower pressures, again, highlighted across the Dakotas and much of Nebraska. That's going to set up a secondary boundary of more heavy rainfall, I think, that will start to take shape on Wednesday, get really activated on Thursday, and then on Friday, another batch of heavier rains. Well, you can see in your far right-hand corner, that's your low pressure. That is what could be Ernesto by then that we've been tracking into the Atlantic. And, and if we continue, you can see the overall ensemble guidance of the European ensembles with the trend keeping pretty much every single member now off the east coast so yes all indications are this continues west northwest bound but as it heads into puerto rico area it's going to hit that ridge of high pressure and then kind of pull it and steer it further off out into the open water so yes we've got almost every member of the european ensembles kind of hinting at it stays offshore while we have yet one little rogue member <laughs> trying to say hey there's a possibility of a storm but since it's just literally just one member that that is just not going to happen. So, yeah, here's the latest guidance from the National Hurricane Center. It has a 90% probability of this tropical wave we've been tracking for a long time now. Yeah, 70% this is going to form. So it's literally still a thousand miles east of the Lesser Antilles. And yes, it's going to continue west, northwest bound, approaching the U.S. Virgin Islands by likely Wednesday or Thursday, getting near Puerto Rico, maybe by Friday. And then it's probably going to be Ernesto by then. But all indications are this is going to take a swift turn more northerly. And if you look at Invest 98, which is what it's named right now before it takes the name Ernesto, this is all the members, right? This is all your model guidance, kind of a summary, your, your blend of models, essentially. You can actually see most all of them pretty much take it once it hits getting near Puerto Rico, kind of drift further west, northwest, and eventually maybe even taking more of a just due northerly track. But all of its members pretty much have this continuing to push out into the open waters. And yes, it very will likely become actually a hurricane as well. But further you know, inland, as we head into the United States, going into that Wednesday, Thursday timeframe, there's that another little cooler, small pocket push with some lower pressures highlighted across Montana, back into Wyoming, those areas into the Dakotas again, but especially I'm kind of looking at more into Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri. I think that's going to be the favored bullseye of the storm track with these little short waves that are coming across. You can see the lift. You got to have some sort of mechanism in the atmosphere to lift the atmosphere and wring out that precipitation. I think with these disturbances, especially combined with some of that low pressure that's moving in, that's going to put a, a heavier rainmaker and stronger wind gust event highlighted across Minnesota, back into Iowa, getting into portions of Nebraska, Missouri, into Illinois as we head Wednesday, Thursday. Here's your setup for Thursday with the Weather Prediction Center having the, you know, the, the, uh, the monsoonal flow, bringing some much needed rain showers from New Mexico back into Colorado. And then once it ties into this low pressure and with these little shortwave events, We'll have that heavier rains swift through Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, back into Illinois. And I think that just expands and continues heading into Friday for this upcoming week. Now getting into Wisconsin, really highlighted over a good part of Iowa into Illinois. I think that's going to be the heaviest rainmakers. And that will extend into Indiana and eventually kind of sneak into areas of Kentucky. So yeah, if we look at the precipitation water content, your your PWAT val values, what you would typically see in the month of August, August, yeah, well above average for this time of year. So I am expecting not like what you're getting in Oklahoma City this morning, but definitely some heavier rains, lit likely some, you know, one to three inch rainfall at you know rainfall amounts, even higher than that. If you combine the the Wednesday Thursday time frame, so if we combine that, you're looking at over on the overall ensemble guidance of the European, 
Yeah, it's kind of hinting at several inches of rain with this kind of conveyor belt of moisture. As you can see, much of the ridge of high pressure will be locked and building and shifting further north by then. That puts the placement of the storm track further north as well. So highlighted across that northwest flow with the low pressures across the Dakotas, really ringing out the precipitation across Iowa, M Missouri, back into Illinois in lighter amounts as you feed getting into indiana but especially in kentucky and then lighter as you swift through and you can see where the red is well out in the open waters in the atlantic so if we combine everything for the next seven days pretty much looks like this so yeah so far you've got the ridge of high pressure is going to be building back slowly building back in for a good part of the south kind of reinforcing that shot of high you know heat that you've been dealing with but yes, just slightly to the north of there, across the middle part, central and northern periphery of the country, it's cooler, right? You've got that cooler you know, push of cooler air predominantly continuing for pretty much all week long. So it's going to be, again, kind of a, a rare treat as we head into the second half of August. But we're also going to be dealing with that heavier rain. So you got the ridge of high pressure just begging for rain further south. But further north, that's where the storm track is going to be. And yes, highlighted across you know missouri uh and you know iowa back into illinois wisconsin indiana indiana that is going to be your favorite area for the heaviest rain as this moves out of oklahoma to, uh, to today i think you're going to be drying out for most most of the week while most of the rain will be shifting to your north uh by then so you know beyond that if we look at the tropics of course we're going into the heart of hurricane season so it's not abnormal that we're going to be seeing multiple waves come off the coast of africa and as we get into that second half of august yes we're going to be looking at the caribbean again we're going to be looking at all this area about the mid you know the main development region because most long-term guidance is hinting at a fairly bullish time frame with more of these tropical waves and maybe increasing numbers of tropical activity as we head into that second half of august but as we head into that second half of august i think much of the south and the deep south continues with that heat while most of the cooler air will be trapped just to the north while much of the south is going to continue to bake under that ridge of high pressure so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update wire protect you before and after the storm